Thank you. So, hello everyone. Let's have a show of hands. Who are not familiar with FinFisher? Okay, as expected, most of you are. But here's a trivia question for you. Who is the company behind FinFisher? Yeah, you see, now it's not so straightforward. When you will write FinFisher into Google, you can find website finfisher.com and there is some company, FinFisher GmbH, in Germany. But then there is another company called Gamma Group. They are something like their owners or they are in some another relationship. So yeah, the company behind FinFisher, whatever it is, they are sells their products as a law enforcement tools to governments and their agencies. In other words, it's a spyware. Uh, let's take a look what we already know about this infamous spyware. First attribution was in 2012. Security researchers attributed the sample to the company behind FinFisher. In the same year, there was a huge affair about abusing these tools against political dissidents, journalists, and other people like this. Um, then in 2014, the company was hacked and the data leaked public. You can find the data on WikiLeaks, for example. Uh, data includes cu their customers, price list, and also the binary, the spyware itself. Even when the hack was in 2014, the samples are actually from 2010. Those samples are analyzed by many security researchers because, you know, it was big hype. The company was hacked, FinFisher. So let's analyze the samples. Yeah, those are analyzed, but they are old ones. There is nothing special there, no obfuscation, just old samples. Yeah, uh, so then FinFisher from time to time attracts attention of security researcher when uh, they discover that uh, it exploits some OD exploits. Uh, for example, the last one against Microsoft Word, it was abused against people in Russia. Common distribution method to spread FinFisher seen in the past was uh, via spear phishing emails with, for example, malicious documents or infected links. FinFisher attracted our attention when they abused recent zero day. At first, honestly, I was surprised that, hold on, like, FinFisher, is it still active? Uh, we wanted to know more what's inside the binary, whether there are not some improvements or what we can find there. And we wasn't able to find any detailed analysis of FinFisher newer samples. Only this, or oh, analysis of these samples, of the old ones. Uh, every time some researcher reports about FinFisher, they don't go into technical details. So we looked deeper and we found that FinFisher sample, newer samples are heavily obfuscated. And it makes sense. When you sell to governments, you need to put extra effort then uh, in hiding, in avoiding antivirus products, um, obfuscation to prevent being analyzed by security researchers. Uh, yeah, um, so they've got pretty good protections. And we have spent a lot of time of beating them, especially this one, custom virtual machine. And we were successful. We obfuscated the sample. When you open the sample in IDA Pro, you will find that every instruction is followed by two conditional jumps, which acts together as one unconditional jump. While this trick is not new, we've seen that in the past in common mass spreading malware, but the common cyber criminals use this trick only once or twice in the binary. But FinFisher spyware is obfuscated like this through the whole binary. No problem, you can overcome this uh, by patching two conditional jumps into one unconditional. And after a few more improvements, you will get a graph like this. This is a virtual machine with bytecode inside the binary. So it is not Packer. Uh, it is a virtual machine, and those virtual machines are known from anti-pirate protections. They are considered as best protection mechanism we know, for example, VM Protect or Code Virtualizer from Orans. Yeah, it's very well designed and implemented. 
It's got 34 VM handlers, so they are still improving it because four years ago they had only 10 VM handlers. Uh, you can overcome this protection by writing your own, by analyzing this interpreter and writing your own interpreter and then parse bytecode. We did it, we fully devirtualized the sample and we have found uh, the first configuration. In the picture we can see um, pseudo code of devirtualization. So they are checking for image timestamp, the last bit of image timestamp, whether it is set or not. If it is set, they are trying to detect virtual environment like VMware or VirtualBox. And if detected, execution exit, exits. If the last bit of image timestamp is not set, it is compatible with virtual environment. In one sample, we have also found one anti-emulation trick. The intention of anti-emulation is not to make it harder for reverse engineers or malware researchers, but to avoid, avoid antivirus products, in specific their scanners and emulators. While reverse engineering of the FinFisher sample was very interesting, it was a hard topic, good challenge. I can continue, no problem. <laughs> Uh, it still wasn't the most interesting thing about recent FinFisher campaigns. So, the most interesting thing about recent FinFisher campaigns was new distribution method. While we were, we were reverse engineering the sample, we looked at other prevalence uh, of FinFisher samples and we have found something that had icon VLC, name VLC, and after execution it really runs VLC installer. But actually, it was VLC player trojanized with FinFisher. After execution, it drops to the same place uh, original binary digitally signed VLC and executes it, while on the same time in, uh, FinFisher spyware is installed on the computer. Well, this is something unusual, so let's take a look at another samples, another evidence. We have found more than 12 applications trojanized with FinFisher so far. A lot of them had trojanized many versions. Many versions with local language settings. 32-bit application and also 64-bit application. But hold on, as I mentioned at the beginning, common distribution method for FinFisher in the past was spear phishing emails. How the hell do you spread trojanized applications? I mean, it could work for, it could work for common cyber criminals, for mass spreading malware, of course, but I don't think that it could work, work for targeted attack. So how, do, how they spread this? We have found that the only website where, or URL domain where the trojanized application were is this one. This domain followed by MD5 hash. Okay, now it starts to make more sense, but still, I guess that victims or targets doesn't write this, uh, this URL into the URL bar, into the browser manually, you know? So how they encountered this domain? And we have found that they visited official VLC website, for example, and when clicking on download button, they were sent to website where is trojanized FinFisher. So yes, they were redirected. Someone in the middle, I am the target for example, here is the server, someone in the middle modified the response from the server with this code and uh, redirected targets to server where was trojanized application with FinFisher. By the way, we didn't see HTTPS redirection from, from SSL encrypted communication. When so many of our customers are redirected for such a long time, it starts to be very strange. The question is, from which point the attacker redirected the targets? 
It could be on Wi-Fi level. We don't know whether our customers uh, were on desktop PC or laptop, but let's imagine they had laptops, so they were on Wi-Fi. It could be somebody, the attacker, could hack their Wi-Fi. Yes. Uh, it could be on the wire inside the building, or of course, on the wire in front of the building. Let's take a look what, uh, where the, uh, the targets were sitting while they were redirected. In the picture, we can see the map, the not, uh, not the real one, but the purpose is just to show you the distances between the cities uh, where targets were located when they were redirected. The distance um, from city A to city D is 1,000 plus kilometers. So, shall the attacker operate on Wi-Fi level or on the wire in front of the building? It would be very hard to target so many victims for such a long time on such a big distances. So I don't see that, that as an option. It could be infected router, of course. But, uh, yeah, so the most probable attacking scenario when attacker decides to infect the router would be following. Attacker infects, uh, infects a router, then he replaces primary DNS server to his own in DHCP server configuration. So when the target is going to visit the website, the attacker would change the IP address. And there could be either phishing website or transparent proxy. But let me show you redirect once again to Trojan, redirect to Trojanized application. It was done with this code. So it wasn't the case. We have seen that the target is on the real official VLC website, but he was redirected with this code. So this attacking scenario doesn't fit with infected router. There are other options. It could be more far away. For example, the software vendors could be hacked. We've seen in the past that there are a few examples that companies, software vendors were, were hacked and the malware was deployed to targets through hacked company. But do you remember the slide where I showed you Trojanized applications? There are a lot of them. So it is highly unlikely that so many software vendors would be hacked for such a long time and they would spread FinFisher spyware. I don't see this as an option. Of course, there could be some free leather agency on the wire outside of the country. Yeah, but, you know, attacking another country with commercial sold spyware FinFisher, the spyware is detected by a lot of antivirus vendors so it wouldn't be effective method how to attack another country. So when we put so much effort into hijacking the wire, you wouldn't probably use FinFisher spyware. And there, there is one option left, internet service provider. But hold on, internet service provider? I mean, it was never observed in the past that internet service provider infects targets or malware is deployed through internet service provider. Even if we realize what it would mean, it still looks as the most probable option right now. But ISP, damn. Let's try to find some another evidence. Yeah, there are some similar similarities between the targets. They are all under the same internet service provider. The issued one, uh, ISP, has approximately 90% of the market in the country. Well, let's take a look at the leak on the WikiLeaks. And we have found that there is a product called Finfly ISP. According to their documentation, Finfly ISP is a strategic, countrywide, as well as a tactical solution that can be integrated into ISP's access. Damn, ISP. 
really? Let's try to find another evidence. And we have found, we, we focused on that ISP, and we have found that uh, they've got some censorship in the country. But, but first, let's keep th mm, this for, for a second, and first I would like to explain what redirect actually is. So it is a legitimate functionality provided by browsers. Uh, when user visits URL and the URL is not available, server can send redirect to user, and browsers um, handles these redirects, and they redirect automatically user to new website. There are a lot of redirects which could be used, for example, HTTP or script redirects. Just let's take a look at the random examples, for example, script redirects. Following codes could be used to redirect customer or user. For example, this JavaScript code is just a random example of code, or this HTML code can be used to redirect user. There are HTTP redirects, a lot of them, but in attack I'm describing, we know that they used HTTP 307 redirect. So let's take a look only into this redirect. This is another example, just a random example of HTTP 307 redirect. There is header, temporary redirect, HTTP 307 temporary redirect, something, location followed by URL, which browser visits, then connection keep alive, and something, something, something. It's not important. This is just another random redirect. Header, HTTP 307, temporary redirect, something, location, URL, and something, something, something. It's not important. This is another, just a random example of redirect, how it could look like. You've got, even if you choose HTTP 307 redirects, you've got unlimited of options what form could it have. It's up to you. As I mentioned, internet service provider in the country uh, is filtering the internet. There are some censorship there. When you are their customer, you can choose that uh, you can choose parental control as a volunteer, as a volunteer. Yeah. So when you visit forbidden website, inter internet service provider redirects you to new website, which announces something like you are not allowed to visit that website. This censorship is done by internet service provider, and they used this code for this. Let's take a look once again what redirect was used uh, for redirect targets to trojanized applications. It was this code. Yes, it is the very same. Internet service provider or their customers in the country have, if not everyone, there are at least somebody has a limit on the internet. So once their customer reaches the limit of the internet, he is redirected to website which announces something like, you don't have data limit, you, you are out of the limit, so you are not allowed to visit a website or surf internet anymore. This redirect is done by internet service provider and they, they used this code. Let me show you once again the code used for redirects to trojanized applications. Yeah, it is the same. According to leaked documentation, this product uh, has a mode which detects PE files on the fly and once detected, they can trojanize PE files with FinFisher or any other malware. When we've seen so many trojanized applications, various versions, redirects from such as uncommon websites like this we believe this product was used. They detected that target is going to download trojanized application, or download application, they trojanized it on the fly, saved it for later usage, and firewall redirect, redirected targets to trojanized application. But maybe the operators, the attackers, 
are highly skilled and they wanted to fake evidence, especially the last one, even if it doesn't make sense, but maybe they wanted to fake evidence, just maybe. Let's take a look at their skills. So almost all Trojanized applications were sitting on this domain, followed by MD5 hash, and they were targeting citizens or targets in one country. So, of course, they could put filter to this domain. So they would filter it, uh, so it won't be accessible from the whole world. But when you had link, you could download the Trojanized application from the whole world. They, put, they didn't put any filter. They could do it much harder, like we've seen that in other APT campaigns, like for Turla, for, exa for example. They could delete the link immediately after target is infected, but they didn't. They didn't put any effort into hiding evidence. I would say it was a pretty long campaign without noticing from security researchers. So what are the benefits when you decide to deploy malware through ISP? It is more effective. In compare with spear phishing emails, targets could be suspicious. But when you wait until your target is going to download application, he will download it and run it. Yeah, when targets are less suspicious, it is the whole operation is stealthier. So the probability of revealing the campaign is decreasing. And probably from long-term point of view, it is also cheaper than zero-day exploits. In another country, we've observed there is trojanized, or they redirect targets to trojanized TrueCrypt. And there was also classic FinFisher spyware, not the trojanized one, with the name trima.exe. So according to showed evidence, we see the only valid explanation the spyware, spyware was deployed through internet service provider. What, is all, what this all means, we should not trust data from internet service provider anymore. So we must check digital certificates of downloaded applications every time, or at least hashes, if not available. Uh, we should visit as much as possible HTTPS versions of websites, of course. For this, there is a very good plugin, HTTPS Everywhere. And uh, the best what we can do is use encrypted VPN. I mean, encrypted trusted VPN outside the country. Thank you very much for your attention.